Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have a Behringer, Behringer, I'm not sure how you say it, but a Behringer mixer. This one is a Henix X1204 USB. Um, little eight channel mixer, four mic, two stereo. Actually for something this size, aux three and four is actually kind of nice. Most of them only have one aux out and then a stereo main mix out. Uh, this one comes to us from a ham radio operator that I know. And uh, he uh, this has run flawlessly in his shack for quite some time. He shut this off to go on vacation, and when it, he came back, it did not start back up. So to duplicate the fault, as you can see, the lights are blinking. Display didn't light up. Nothing started. Everything kind of went out to lunch. So, in talking with me, I expect this to be some form of power supply issue. I can hear a slight ticking coming from the unit, so a uh, pretty good indication that there's a switch mode power supply in here that is not functioning. So, what we're going to do is I'll tear this apart, and we'll get into it, pull the power supply out, see what we can do to fix the uh, power supply, and get this mixer back up and running. To take this thing apart, these are trim pieces just in case you have a rack system where this can actually sit into a uh, specialized mixing cabinet. Uh, so the trim has to come off. There's screws under the trim. There's These screws do not come off. Power supply is actually right here. Probably the ground screw. Not sure yet. But these screws down here need to come off. The screws underneath have to come off. And there's a couple screws in the back that have to come off to get the whole unit out as a as an assembly. I do believe when you take this apart, the power supply comes with. Uh, hopefully, there's a plug to interconnect to unplug it from the board to get it all to slide out. But we won't know that till we get into it. So let me start taking the screws apart, and we will see what we find. All right, all the screws are removed. There was two additional screws up here that I had to pull out. There are two different sizes. We have a large screw and a small screw. The nice thing is they are all the same size uh, lengthwise for the smalls and as well as for the large. So it kind of makes disassembly and reassembly pretty easy. And the bottom comes off and we do have a cable. Pop this out from the board and we have our mixing board output section, faders and everything, and our power supply right here, which is, I bet you, where our problem is. Uh, it's a nice thing, it's a good thing we didn't have to take this board out, because that is a whole lot of knobs that have to come apart. All right, more screws to pull this off the bottom of the case. Two more screws release the power supply from the bottom of the case. We have more screws we have to take off because I have to get the board out from the bottom of the power, or at least get the um, bottom board off and the top board off. So we got these two screws, these two screws, and these two screws to rip this apart so we can get at the board. And here's our first look at the power supply. Uh, nothing jumps out at me as being completely dead and toasted. I have a sneaking suspicion this capacitor might be a problem. This is usually the start cap to get the logic working to kick the power supply over. These small ones tend to have a problem in these cheaper switch mode power supplies. We do have a switch mode power supply. Here's our switching element. Here's our transformer. Here's our bulk filter cap and our output filters and then some regulators and then some more filtering before it finally comes out the board. It is nice. It is labeled as to what it is. Um, but I did hear the even unloaded, the power supply ticks. So um, I doubt there's a short in the mixer. I do think the problem is in the power supply. So we're going to go forward. And I need to pop this board off, which means six more screws, one in each corner. And then the two back here to release this from the bottom plate, which is fixed to the power supply. Well, in exposing the bottom of the power supply and taking a quick look, we do have some thermal. I uh, don't want to say it's damaged, but some discoloration here. There is a high wattage resistor right there, so that's not totally shocking. 
Uh, we have some isolation slots on the rectifier. So this is going to be where the f um, AC comes in, gets rectified, goes into the bulk filter, which is right here. This trace comes over to the switching transformer, yes. And then right here is where we're going to have the split between the main side of the power supply and the secondary side of the power supply. That's why there's no copper in here. This is some of the isolation. But we do have some contamination and some dirt, crust, something. I don't know if a cap leaked or anything like this, but I'm not thrilled with kind of this crusty stuff in here. It's not, there's not enough for it to be a conformal coating, but I'm not 100% sure what that is. So um, I'm going to clean that off for sure. Uh, first up, we're going to start with this capacitor, this capacitor right here. And then we're going to work our way to the secondary side, get these caps and then the regulators and then the outputs. Um, since we're in here and we've torn it down this far, this is going to be a, uh, we'll just do a cap refresh on this power supply. Uh, if you are working on one of these power supplies and opening up switch mode power supplies, do take care. Uh, I live in a 120 volt section of the world, so this cap gets about 315 volts on it. If you're in a 240 volt section of the world, this cap gets about 450 volts on it once the mains gets rectified. And it's uh, mains to rectifier to cap, and then this element chops up the DC to drive this transformer, which then drives the secondary side. Kind of how a switcher works in a nutshell. But there is some decent voltages in here, so if you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk, and please take care. Well, we may have called it in one and found the smoking gun already. In circuit leaky, but it does have an ESR. This is a uh, this is not not a happy capacitor. Open open circuit, low capacitance. So, uh, yeah, there's our first one that's not uh, happy. Brand wise, um, Sandcon, uh, 25 volt, 47 microfarads. So. That's going to get replaced. And that's about enough for me, since this is not my unit. I don't own it. And this is a this is a s acquaintance slash customer's unit. Um, so that's going to be enough for me to refresh this power supply completely, because I do not want this to have another problem when I send it back. So uh, time to hit the irons, and we're going to get it all refreshed. The bulk filter is usually okay. So it's very rare for, it, at least in my experience, your mileage may vary, it's rare for the bulk to go bad. It's possible, but it's rare. But uh, definitely all this output, these capzons, they're coming out, um, and we're, this is going to get some um, Rubicons and um, Rubicons, Panasonics, and Nishikons. I have not completely rebuilt the power supply yet, but this is some interim testing because I was told not to spend too much time on this board. Little did people know, when it sees the green mat, it gets fixed. Before I went and ordered capacitors, because, of course, yet another piece of equipment, I don't have the values I need in the lab, I could overvalue them, but then I run out of the physical space. It is what it is, and why I have a capacitor wall. Uh, I figured I'd do some interim testing, so I put the power supply back on its shielded board, and I have everything hooked up, and if I turn it on... Well, that looks a lot healthier, so... We have power, and it's stable, and we have a uh, boot up of the digital section. So uh, our power supply is fixed at this point. It still needs to be refreshed a little bit, but it is functioning. So it was just that control cap is what took out this power supply. And uh, there we go. So going to keep working on the refresh, get some parts ordered now. And uh, through the magic of the camera, I have to wait on the uh, delivery truck. You guys will be back in a moment. I spoke with the board's owner, and given the replacement cost and things like that, he doesn't want to put too much more into it than he has to. Uh, so he said at this point he'd just like to button it back up and use it till it dies and then probably replace it, which is totally fine. Uh, in this case, I don't get to make the decisions. So we'll get everything tossed back together and... Um, Get everything all buttoned up, leave it on, let it run for a while, put some signal through it, and just final checks it, but, and uh, go from there.
All right, we did clean up what was on the bottom of the uh, power supply. I'm not really sure what that was, but it was orange and came off pretty easy with alcohol, so I didn't have to fight with it too much. So that's all cleaned up. Next up is burn-in testing. So we just let it sit and cook for a while and uh, see what happens. Should be fine. And if, as long as there's no other problems, it's ready to go back to its owner. And completely back together, powered. And it wakes up. All right, so burn-in testing was successful. This guy uh, stayed powered up and everything was fine. We can turn him on one more time. Nice and booted up. Everything's good to go. Main power's on the left. Phantom power's on the right. Turn off Phantom and let the uh, main one kick on. So this one's ready to go back to its owner. It's staying close by, so if it has any other problems, it may show up again. Might not. But uh, we got this one serviced up to its uh, owner's request, and we will go from there. So as always, thanks for hanging out with me at the bench and taking a look at the channel. If you like what you're seeing, hit the all the YouTube buttons, like, subscribe, and share. If you'd like some additional content and want to support the channel, check out the Patreon page. Patrons are running a little bit ahead from what we have on YouTube. But as always, more is on the way. So with that... I will see everybody in the comment section in between videos and in the next one. Bye for now.